Hi guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. Today I am filming the first in a series of five videos talking about how to make a quilt. Now this isn't any kind of a professional course, I haven't had any professional training, I'm self-taught and this isn't necessarily how you should make a quilt, it's just how I make a quilt. And I'm about to make one for a friend's baby so I thought I would take you step by step through the process and talk about how I make a quilt. I've split these videos up into five different topics or areas that I want to cover and I'm going to talk about those topics and then I'm also going to demonstrate as I build this quilt for my friend's baby. In today's video I would like to cover the tools that you might need to make a quilt and also choosing a design. Now as far as tools go you have to remember that quilting started hundreds of years ago. Quilting has been around pretty much forever and you don't need all of the fancy tools that are available today to make a quilt but they're there for a reason. They're there because they make the job easier. And the number one thing that I have found that makes quilting so much easier is a rotary cutter. I will show you all of these tools and talk about them in more detail in a minute but I just want to run through the list. So the first thing I would recommend that you get is a rotary cutter. You're also going to need a mat to use the cutter on. You're also going to need some quilting rulers to use with your cutter. I have a couple of quilting rulers here. You'll need a pair of sharp scissors, an iron and ironing board, a sewing machine unless you plan to sew your quilt by hand which of course you can do. You'll need a tape measure, masking tape, basting pins and if you're going to hand quilt you might want a quilting hoop and a needle and a thimble. These are the tools that you're going to need. We'll cover fabrics in a different video. As for choosing your design, the world is your oyster. You can choose whatever design you want. You can modify a design that you've seen somewhere and taken inspiration from. That's the creative part of quilting is you can use tiny little bits of fabric if you are using up scraps and build a design out of that or you can use big bold pieces of fabrics. There is so much inspiration available online and in magazines from traditional quilts to really modern quilts and everything in between. There's something for everybody. So I would recommend going onto Pinterest and having a browse. You'll soon kind of get an idea of what style you like. I prefer simple designs, nothing too avant-garde or modern. I do like modern quilts. Modern quilts tend to be more, I guess, cleaner in design. They can use traditional quilting block designs but they tend to have clearer colors. So rather than the muted tones, you're gonna to get white instead of cream. You're gonna get more bold colors, not necessarily bright colors, but clearer colors rather than muted. That tends to be the trend for more modern quilts. And that's just the kind of thing that I like. I have a few Pinterest boards I will link down below. I have them split up into quilts made with half square triangles, quilts made with rectangles predominantly, quilts made with squares predominantly and different ideas. So I have various quilting boards that I've pinned to and I also have one that's just called quilts and that will be general tips for quilting or color combinations that I like that I can take inspiration from. So have a browse on Pinterest or look through quilting magazines. You can possibly get them from your library if you don't want to buy them and get a feel for what catches your eye and then you can choose a design from that. There are pros and cons to the different designs that you may choose. If you choose something with curves, that's gonna be really tricky and it might be something that you should put off until you are a little bit more experienced with quilting if you're just beginning. Curves, you have to take an inside curve and an outside curve, turn them inside out, match them correctly when they, the fabric's wanting to stretch and pull. You're gonna to have to sew that curve and then flatten it out and have it lay flat and that is, a little bit daunting not everybody gets it right I haven't even attempted that yet because I know it's a bit tricky so bear in mind things like that if you're just beginning to make a quilt don't choose a really tricky design if you choose a design with a lot of small squares with sashing in between like this one behind me that's going to be a lot more work than if you choose a design with big blocks that will go much more quickly when you're putting your quilt together however something like this is easier to make from scraps than a quilt with big blocks. So if you're using clothing that you're cutting up to make a quilt, making a quilt with big blocks may not be your best choice because you're not going to be able to have that much fabric out of, for example, a child's shirt to make a 12 inch square. You may not even be able to do that or you'll get very little out of your fabric. 
I would also recommend starting with something smaller like a table runner or a baby quilt to begin with. It's so much easier to manage, it's finished much more quickly so it's more rewarding and it's just less daunting than a massive quilt that you're going to try for the first time. It's also going to be cheaper for you so if you in the end decide that quilting isn't for you, you haven't outlaid a whole ton of cash. Here is an example of a baby quilt that I completed with some scraps. This is less than a meter square, I don't know what that is in inches, but I just used up scraps for that and that's what the back looks like. Now that I've listed all of the tools that you're going to need and talked a little bit about design, I will show you my tools and where I store them and where I got them and what they're about. And I will also take you through the design that I have chosen for my friend's baby's quilt. Here's my sewing box. This is a Sistema box. I think it is 27 liters. It has a snap-on lid and I bought the craft tray that goes inside and I keep all of my sewing goodies in here. So this is my rotary cutter. This is an Ulfa cutter. There's different brands you can get. This is how it looks. Your blade can either go on that side or on that side depending on if you're right or left-handed and it's got a lock button so if you if it's locked you can't squeeze this once it's unlocked you squeeze this and your blade extends so you can see there the blade comes out and you'll squeeze it and you'll cut and you'll just press hard and cut and it will slice through your fabric it's amazing and it's so much quicker than using scissors so they come in different sizes, they come in different designs, you can get pink ones and you know different colors and your blades will obviously be different sizes. I bought this one off eBay I think and I just get my replacement blades on eBay as well. This is what the blades look like. So when it starts to get blunt you'll know about it, it won't cut cleanly through your fabric and you know you need to replace the blade. So that's what they look like and to replace the blade you unscrew this and take this apart remove the old blade put the new one on and screw it up so that is a highly recommended tool it makes a huge difference as i mentioned in the video you're going to need a mat to work on this mat i got at kmart it was about six dollars it's inexpensive you can get self-healing mats all over the place they're just you know regular craft mats and you're going to need that. You don't want to damage the surface that you're cutting on. You're also going to need rulers. As I mentioned, these quilting rulers are plastic. And as you can see, they've got designs on and they've got measurements. So you will use these lines to cut different designs out of your fabric. Here's a different one. It also has the lines but they're just etched in, they're not printed on. And you can also insert your blade and cut down the middle, it's got a slot. Uh, I use this one to cut longer pieces of fabric. You know, the measurements are quite easy to read and I use this one if I'm cutting a piece of fabric that wide or, you know, if I'm cutting a triangle or something. So they both come in very handy. You can get all different sizes and shapes. You can get triangular ones, you can get longer ones, bigger ones, smaller ones. These are the ones that I have found useful. So this is just to show you how I use the lines to cut different shapes. So let's say I've got a long strip of the blue. I can line up the line on the template. So I can show you a bit closer. So you can line up this triangular line and then cut there and then line up the next one and cut. So you can create triangles to quilt with. Um, obviously if you're making long strips and you want them a particular width you can line up the guides on your ruler and then just cut along this edge. I also mentioned you'll need a pair of sharp scissors that's self-explanatory even with a rotary cutter you're going to be snipping threads and odds and ends so you're still going to need scissors and then I think I mentioned basting pins we'll cover this more in depth when I get to that part of the quilt but basically they are these they are safety pins that have a kink in them but like I said, I'll talk more about that when I get to the basting part of the quilt tutorial. So all of my tools except for my biggest ruler and my cutting mat, which unfortunately don't fit into the container, go into there. And I just pop that in the bottom of my closet. And it's easy to grab when I go 
and work at the dining room table, I can just take my whole sewing box and everything is in there that I need. I store my sewing machine in the bottom of the hallway closet and I will show you which one I have. You'll see it in use a little bit later when I come to sew my quilt, but this is the one I have. It is the Brother NS10 and it is amazing. I do love it. It does everything I need it to. I'm quite a basic seamstress, so I don't need anything particularly fancy. But one thing I do appreciate about this machine is it stops with the needle down in your fabric. And that is super handy, especially when turning corners when quilting, which you'll see me do later. On Pinterest, these are some of my quilting boards. And I've had a browse through them and looked at some of the quilts that I wanted to make. And I've decided that for this quilt, I'm just going to keep it really, really simple and just do basic squares. I'm not going to do any sashing in between. I'm just going to keep it simple, like I said, because it's a small quilt. So this is the kind of design I've decided on, except obviously the colors are going to be different. And the way I decided on the colors is I asked Jess what colors she wanted for her quilt. And she showed me this picture of her baby and she said basically these colors, a pale lime green or apple green and baby blue and gray. I hope you found it interesting and helpful as a place to start in your own quilting journey. I'm going to have another video up in a week's time and we're going to talk about fabric. So in the meantime, if you want to join in and create a quilt along with me, why not gather up some tools and get ready to start building your own quilt. Once that video is live, I will link it over here and I will have the playlist linked down below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.